this example, we're given a list of numbers, including some fractions, and we're asked to graph all of them on the number line below. So let's begin with the first one. We have the number negative one-fourth. So if we think about a negative number, as soon as we notice we have a negative value, that lets us know we're going to be dealing with something less than zero. You can think about the number zero splitting that number line in half with negative values to the left and positive values to the right. So negative one-fourth means we're dealing in units of a quarter. We need to take every interval of one, right, from zero to one or zero to negative one, and divide it up into four little pieces. That's what the denominator tells us. And the numerator tells us how many of those pieces we're interested in. Here we're interested in one of them. So we're going to move back one out of four pieces in the negative direction. So that would be my first value negative one four. When we graph a number on a number line, we draw a circle that is completely filled in. And if you were writing this on your page, it's nice to label it for others to see. The next value we need to graph is negative one. That number is already labeled for us on the number line, so we can go ahead and just draw a circle where it's located. The next value is a little more challenging, nine fourths. It means if we're counting by fourths, where there's four spaces between every whole number, we're going to need to count up nine of them. So I could count here one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and then draw a circle when I get to the end of the ninth of those. That's one way to think about it. Another way to think about it could be to convert that fraction nine fourths into a mixed number, which we do by taking, if we think about long division, we divide the numerator by the denominator, 4 goes into 9 twice, 4 times 2 is 8, so we subtract, we have 1 left over, so 2 remainder 1, so we can write it as a mixed number by saying, well, 9 fourths is the same as 2, the denominator always stays the same, and that 1 left over becomes the numerator, 2 and 1 fourth. So the other way to graph 9 fourths is to graph 2 and 1 fourth, so we go all the way out to the number 2, and then forward one-fourth more. Okay, we also need to graph zero here. So there's our zero. Fill in a circle at zero. We need to graph negative seven-fourths. And again, I think it's very helpful to convert it to a mixed number. So I can say negative seven-fourths is going to be equal to negative some whole number. We don't know the whole number. And then a fraction. We know the denominator of the fraction will be four, but we need to figure out what the whole number is and what the numerator is. So we ask ourselves, how many times does 4 go into 7? Well, it goes in one time completely, so the whole number is 1. And our remainder is 3, so we have a numerator of 3. So when we're graphing negative 7 fourths, we're really graphing negative 1 and 3 fourths. So I'll go back to negative 1. There was negative 1. And then I'll go down 3 more, 1, 2, 3. So there would be negative 1 and 3 fourths, or in the terms they gave it to us, negative 7 fourths. The last value we need to graph is 1, so we go to 1 on the number line and draw a circle. To check your answer here, make sure that the number of dots on your line when you're finished is the same as the number of numbers you were given to graph. You were given 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 numbers to graph, and there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 circles on my graph.